obtain the ABCD parameters for the network shown in figure. This is the two port network given in the question and we are required to find ABCD parameters or T parameters or transmission parameters of this two port network and uh, we already know how to find out ABCD parameters from Z parameters and therefore I want you to pause the video and try to solve the question on your own. Alright, now let us understand the solution of this problem and uh, we will first find out the set of equations we have in case of Z parameters and uh, we know step number one is to assign the currents in all the branches of our two port network. This is port number one, the input port and the voltage between the two terminals will be V1 and current I1 will enter the two port network. This is port number two, the output port and the potential difference between these two terminals is equal to V2 and we know according to the convention current I2 will enter the two port network. Now we know the current in this branch it is I1 and we want to find out current in this branch, in this branch and in this branch and we can easily have current in this branch because we can see that across 2 ohm resistor the voltage is Vx. Therefore current through 2 ohm resistor will be Vx divided by 2 and the direction of this current will be top to bottom because we know in resistor power will get dissipated and therefore current will enter the positive terminal and it will leave the negative terminal. Now to find out current in this branch we will apply KCL at this node and you can see that current I1 is entering the node and current Vx by 2 is leaving the node and therefore this current leaving the node will be equal to current I1 minus current Vx by 2. Now let us find out current in this branch and for this we will apply KCL at this node. I1 minus Vx by 2 is entering the node and I2 is also entering the node. Therefore this leaving current will be equal to I1 minus Vx by 2 plus current I2. So in this way we have obtained currents in all the branches we are having in our two port network. Now we will find out the input KVL equation and the output KVL equation. The input KVL equation will be plus V1 plus V1 then we have minus I1 multiplied to 1 minus current I1 multiplied to 1 after this we have minus Vx equal to 0. So from here we can say that voltage V1 is equal to current I1 plus voltage Vx and let's say this is our equation number 1. And now let us find out the output KVL equation and the output KVL equation will be plus V2 plus V2 then we have minus I1 minus Vx by 2 plus I2 multiplied to 4 minus inside the bracket I1 minus Vx by 2 plus current I2 multiplied to 4 after this we have minus 5 Vx minus 5 Vx equal to 0 and when you simplify this you will have voltage V2 equal to 4 times current I1 plus 4 times current I2 plus 3 times voltage Vx and let's say this is our equation number 2. Now when you compare equation number 1 and equation number 2 with their standard forms you will find they are not in standard 
forms and therefore we cannot proceed further and the problem is there because vx is present in both the equations so to have the standard equations we are required to write down vx in terms of i1 and i2 this means we are required to find relation between i1 i2 and vx now if i connect this point to the ground then we know that potential at this point will be zero volt and potential at this point will also be zero volt and therefore potential at this point will be vx and potential at this point will be five times vx five vx and uh, now we will apply kvl starting from this point following this path and ending at this point we will have vx then we have minus i1 minus vx by 2 multiplied to 6 minus i1 minus vx divided by 2 multiplied to 6 after this we have minus i1 minus vx by 2 plus i2 multiplied to 4 minus i1 minus vx by 2 plus i2 multiplied to 4 and then we will equate with 5 times vx we will equate with 5 times vx when you simplify this you will find voltage vx is equal to 10 times current i1 plus 4 times current i2 and now when you put vx equal to 10 i1 plus 4 i2 in equation number 1 when you put vx in equation number 1 you will find voltage v1 is equal to 11 times current i1 plus 4 times current i2 and let's say this is our equation number 3 and now we will do the same thing with equation number 2 we will put vx in equation number 2 and this will give us voltage v2 equal to 34 times current i1 plus 16 times current i2 and let's say this is our fourth equation and in this way we have obtained the set of standard equations we have in case of z parameters and therefore 11 is our parameter z11 4 is our parameter z12 34 is our parameter z21 and 16 is our parameter z22 and we have already performed the conversion of z parameters to a b c d parameters and therefore we know that parameter a is equal to parameter z11 divided by parameter z21 parameter b is equal to the determinant of impedance matrix divided by parameter z21 and parameter c is equal to 1 over z21 and the last parameter parameter d is equal to z22 divided by z21 so from here we can find out all four a b c d parameters but how will you calculate a b c d parameters when you don't remember these conversions in your examination in that scenario you will follow the standard procedure and the standard procedure is to obtain the set of equations we have in case of a b c d parameters using these two equations and when you compare the second equation we are having in case of a b c d parameters with equation number four you will find we have the same set of variables therefore we can have the second equation of a b c d parameters from equation number four so we will rearrange equation number 4 and we can write 34 i1 is equal to v2 minus 16 i2 or we can write i1 is equal to 1 divided by 34 v2 minus 
16 divided by 34i2. When you compare this equation, let's say equation number 5, with the second equation of ABCD parameters, you will find parameter C is equal to 1 divided by 34. When you solve it, you will have 0 0.0. 2941 and parameter D is equal to 16 divided by 34. 16 divided by 34, when you solve it, you will have 0 0.4706. Now, if you have seen the previous lecture, you must know how to find out parameter A and parameter B. Therefore, calculation of parameter A and parameter B is the homework for you. Once you have your answers, post them in comment section. And now I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.